Are you brand new to using a baitcaster and want to learn how to spool your line onto your brand new reel? Let's go. What's up everybody and welcome to this episode of Fishing with Gramps presented by American Legacy Fishing Company. Today we're going to walk through a simple process of how I add fishing line to a brand new empty bait casting reel. So let's jump straight to the table. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you want to do is take your reel and wind it and watch which way the spool goes. Now they all go the same direction, which is back this way, around to the bottom, and then back up over and over and over again. Some spools have a little line tie in here that you can hook your line into, but in the case of this Corrado, there's a cutout here, and that's for you to slip your knot in when you get done tying it. So we'll do that here in a second. The reason it's important to string it onto the reel is that it is the spool that it came on is line memory. Now, fluorocarbon is not super bad with line memory, but hey, why make it any harder than it has to be? So you wanna take it off of the line spool and put it onto the reel the same direction. So what I will normally do is just like I have here, I will lay the spool in front of it and then make sure when I take it off the top that we're going to go in the same direction. So I will feed it through the line guide on the reel. Now, you can take your time and poke it down and then go across, turn the reel over and come back up. I'll just grab a little piece of tape, stick it on there, reel it around and grab it, pull the piece of tape back off, and then I'll give myself, I don't know, a little bit of line to play with while we get this knot set up. All right, so to get started, we're gonna tie a knot. If you wanna learn a knot, plus many other knots that I think will be useful, check the link up here to a video that I did with a bunch of different knots. So to get started, we're gonna tie a basic overhand knot, pull it through, pull it tight, and we'll clip the end off. You can get it nice and close to the knot. And from here, we're going to grab the line that's coming in through the line guide. And we're gonna take our tag end, wrap it around, and then tie another basic overhand knot. Now I'm gonna grab the end of this knot that we tied earlier, and I'm gonna push this knot all the way against it as tight as I can get. because that way there'll be less to pull on. All right, so now I have the loop running around the spool in these two fingers, and then I've got the line that's going back to the line spool uh, in my hand, and I'm just gonna start pulling it all tight. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna draw the first knot we tied into the second, so it's nice and compact, just like that. All right, so now that we got the two knots together, I'm gonna, I pulled the knot tight to the reel, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this knot, this pair of knots that we tied, and I'm gonna slide it into that cutout. All right, so now that I've got that knot in the cutout and I've wrapped it around a few times, let's move on to the next little trick. All right, next, I will take my spool of fluorocarbon and drop it in. Now that's just a big measuring cup. Tap water that's hot, not boiled or anything like that, just hot to the natural running of your sink. And I let it sit for about 30 seconds. So what the warm water is gonna do, is gonna soften that fluorocarbon just a little bit, and it's gonna help us reduce the line memory from the bigger spool and help it kind of pair with the spool that's on our reel. Then after I let it sit for 30 seconds or so, I just run it between my fingers, holding the line straight in front of the reel. You can also put it on the rod that you want to use. But the cool thing about this is the one person operation. Your spool will literally sit there and spin in the water in the direction that we actually need it to go because we tied the line on going in the right direction. But just let your spool sit there in the water and spin and it actually provides enough friction to help you be able to do this and not make it a two-man operation or have the need of, you know, a person holding your spool. It makes it nice and easy. All right, now I don't want to put so much line on that it's running over the ends of the spool. So I take it up to about an eighth of an inch from the top and then I call it good. This is going to be a crankbait reel, 12-pound cigar fluorocarbon in Vizix. So that to me is perfect. So then take our handy scissors, clip it off, and there we have it. There's our beautiful Shimano Corrado DC. 6-3 gear ratio. Gonna go put it on my Dobbins Caden crankbait rod and use it in a tournament tomorrow. Go. 
Captain. Finally! <laughs> I got an upgrade. And it's just that easy. And as you saw, I used this rod and reel combo and this crankbait to catch my first bass on it the very next day in a tournament. Worked out like a champ, no line memory, even casting into the wind. This thing was a dream. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down below and be watching for future videos as we shift our beginner bass fishing series from spinning to bait casting. If you want to see how I spool up braided line on a spinning reel, hey, you can watch that video right here. If you're spooling up a spinning reel with mono or fluorocarbon, you can watch that video right here. Until next time, get outside when you can. Make some memories, one cast at a time.